brothers and sisters, you are welcome to the Surefire Life Conference. The platform the Almighty God has given to us to make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. We are here to learn how to continue to enjoy the blessing of this eternal life that the Almighty God has given us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we have been studying the topic, new creation. I want to continue today and by God's grace conclude on that topic. Our text again is Galatians chapter 6 verse 15. Galatians chapter 6 verse 15. Let's read it together. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. If you understand the power of new creation, a lot of things that are still seeming mysterious, are still seeming confusing, things that generate debates in your life among the religious folks will cease because we are not religious folks. We are new creation of God. We are those who have received life to live the life that God has given to humankind to live. And we'll just again explore that, even that statement that I have made, because it could be confusing to some people. But God will help us to understand. So, so far, we have established, number one, that Jesus Christ, when we are talking about new creation, that we are, we must first talk about Jesus Christ the source of this recreation through whom God has recreated us. So number one, that Jesus Christ is a special, unique being who has the right authority and power to operate in heaven and on earth. We established that. How? Because he, though in the form of God, being in the form of God, has been with God from the beginning, stepped out of eternity, left heaven, and came down to earth and took on the form of man, died as man, buried as man with flesh and blood. In fact, when he was hanging on the cross, they pierced his side and blood and water gushed out. They bruised him and blood flowed out. He died as man. But on the third day, Oh, by the power of God, he was transformed. That body did not see corruption, but that body was transformed by the power of God. I always like to take our minds back to this, because often when people think and talk about resurrection, they just think of spirit. No, it is not spirit. It is body transformed by spirit into a glorious form, a glorious image. That's what makes Jesus unique. And so Jesus, in the form of God, came, took on humanity, divinity took on humanity, and was transformed from humanity into divinity. Hallelujah. The divine took on human form and was transformed from human form into the divine. And so Jesus has the ability, the power, the right, the authority to operate in heaven and on earth. He does not need anybody's permission to operate. Now he is seated at the right hand of the Father, the Almighty God, having all power, authority, dominion, preeminence, everything is under him. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. So, we must first appreciate this transformed Christ. It is him, Jesus Christ, or he through whom God has made us. That's point two now. Transformed also. As we have seen, let's read it again in Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For whom he foreknew, for whom God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Can you see that? Let's take it again. For 
whom he foreknew, you and I, whom God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, the image of his son, Jesus Christ, that he, Jesus Christ, might be the firstborn, the firstborn, the first to be transformed into this glorious image among many brethren. Glory be to God. So through him, we have been recreated, renewed, changed, and transformed into this glorious, the glorious image of the Son of God, which we call the new creation. So you are a new creature. I am a new creature. I am no longer the same man that was born by the Adamic nature. I have received a new creature. I have been recreated. We have been recreated. And you know that 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You know, every time we talk about this scripture, many people just look at the surface side, or rather the outcome. That is, all things have become new. Okay, I was a sinner. Now God has made me a new creation. All things, the old sins have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's the outcome look, which is fine. But what is causing these old things to pass away, this change, this transformation? It is the new creation that has taken place. And so three things we must know about the new creation, things that have happened. When man was created, God breathed into man, and man has senses. Adam named all creatures and all that. Adam tilled the ground, the garden of Eden, as God had given him to look after. And Adam had fellowship with God. So God had, from time, created us with our senses to relate with the physical world and our spirit to commune and relate with God. So when man sinned and was separated from God, it was the spirit relationship with God that was separated. And after that separation, man began to group. And of course, with the devil now coming in, because the Bible says, to whom you yield yourself, servant to obey his servant you become. This is a spiritual principle. Till tomorrow, it remains so. That's why the devil uses this a lot, to trick man into sin so man will submit to him. Even in some spiritual operation, for those of you who dream a lot and you wake up and you don't pray for the dream you dreamt, this is the principle the enemy uses. It will look to you like it was a dream, but in that dream, something actually happened and you yielded to whatever that contract, that agreement was in that dream. Some of you will wake up and you forget it. Some of you will wake up and you don't take any action. You just talk about it. It stands because you have yielded to that agreement. Whatever is signed in the spiritual, as long as you don't counter it, it will take place. So that's the principle. Adam submitted to the devil. That's how the devil has authority in this world. I recommend that you also listen to a man called uh, E.W. Kenyon. I've been talking a lot about him. At times, I would do some of this teaching, and when I, I stumble on his teaching and I've, I, I listen to him, I'll be like, wow, because he would just be saying exactly the things we have said. So by that uh, sin of Adam, the sin of treason, I'm taking that word from E.W. Kenyon, indeed, because Adam, whom God created, teamed up with Satan and therefore um, sin against God and became subject to the devil. In fact, man actually acquired the nature of the devil, the nature of sin. 
If you argue that with me, let's go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8 from verse 40. He said, but now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. Let me start from 39 to connect it. 39, they answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. So here Jesus was telling the Jews, the chosen race, human race that God chose for himself. He said, if you were Abraham's children, you wouldn't do the works of Abraham. Now, let's follow the reading through. 40, but now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. 41. You do the deeds of your father. This is Jesus speaking to the Jews. He said, you do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. 42, Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself. Then he sent me. 43. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. 44, you are of your father, the devil. Every human being born in the Adamic nature has acquired that nature of sin. John chapter 8, verse 44, let's read it again. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. Do you see that? So all those who are going about and a great man and you are not born by the spirit of God, you have one nature. The Adamic nature that was acquired, that has acquired the nature and character of the arch enemy of God. So that's why we're talking about new creation. So new creation means for God now recreating you and I, changing us, transforming us from that Adamic nature into the glorious nature an image of the Son of God. That's what 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4 talks about, which we have been studying in the past. I'll just read verse 4. It says, by which have been given up to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through love. Glory be to God. So. Let's walk through this now that we have established that Jesus transformed. So through him, we also who are human and have been born into that nature have been recreated, renewed, transformed into the glorious image of the Son of God. I was saying three things that at least we should pay attention to. So number one, God has always dwelled. That's why I reestablished the relationship that God had with Adam before the fall. God has always put his spirit in man to relate with man. So man through the spirit of God in man relates with God. So Jesus has restored us to this new creation that therefore can receive that spirit of God to relate again with God. That's number one. Number two, that new creation has to be free from the corruption of the world, that corruption that the devil brought into the world, Satan brought into Adam. As you saw there in that John chapter 8, two key words, murderer and lie between these two 
You can put all the other wickedness in the world. Look at the level of wickedness that, are, that is in the world. Human beings will kill another human being without blinking an eye because of wickedness of the devil. Wickedness. So this new creation must be devoid, cleansed of sin, cleansed of this wicked nature that man through Adam had acquired, which is festering all over the world. We will be crying, where is God? I'm sure God is also crying back to us. Say, where are you? Like he, he asked Adam, Adam, where are you? You thought because God, you're omnipotent, you're omniscience, you didn't know where Adam was. He knew, but he was wondering, Adam, he was almost, I'm paraphrasing now, don't quote me, I'm just trying to give meaning to it. He was almost saying that, what has happened to you, Adam? So when men cry, God, where are you? God is asking, what has happened to you, man? I have sent my son, Jesus Christ, to recreate you and bring you back to me. Because man was lost through Adam's treason, treasonable sin. Man teaming up with the devil, act enemy of God and submitting to the devil and therefore giving the authority that God gave to Adam to rule over this world and dominate the world to the devil. That's where the devil operates from. And that's how the devil, through his demons, will possess human beings before he can operate because he cannot. Unlike Jesus Christ that has come, God, man, man, God, he can operate in this world. He can do anything he chooses and pleases to do like we have established. The devil has to always sneak through the human vessel, that team that they formed, that alliance that Adam and the devil formed. So God has to recreate us. So number two, I was saying is that the created being has to be clean, has to be washed, purged. And that's why the blood of Jesus has washed us, cleansed us, purged us. Has to be clean, has to escape the corruption, that nature of corruption, that loss. And then number three, has to be reconnected by the spirit of God. Has to be reconnected by the spirit of God, back to God. Yes, we can say, oh Lord. So that brings me then to the point of looking at how this new creation has been put together. Hallelujah. And that's what we mean when we say temple of God. Temple of God. So let's quickly look at temple of God so you understand now from what we have established why you are the temple of God, why you have been made the temple of God. Because God has always longed to fellowship to have relationship. A Christian life is about relationship with God. That relationship that was broken between Adam and God is what Jesus has recreated us and restored us back. Let me recap those three points. That number one, the Adamic nature, the nature of sin has to be done with, dealt with. The Adamic nature has to be broken. And that number two, the Holy Spirit of God, the Spirit of God that has restored us back to that relationship. Number three, I've talked about the cleansing. It has to be clean. We have to be purged. So this is how the temple has been put. This, our body, is where God has always, through our spirit, related with man whom he has created. Man is the prize creation of God. And so God has restored man back to himself through this recreation process. And Jesus Christ has been the builder that God has used to build us, build this temple back to him. Let's quickly look at Matthew chapter 27, Matthew chapter 27, verse 40. And saying, you who destroyed the temple and built it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, 
come down from the cross because Jesus said, destroy this temple. I will rebuild it in three days. First Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. First Corinthians chapter 3, 16 and 17. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles, note that word, if anyone defiles, God takes this very seriously, defiles the temple of God. God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are? Can you see that? So, this temple is what God sent Jesus to rebuild. And so Jesus kept talking about it. I will rebuild the temple of God. I will rebuild the temple of God. Because we are the temple of the living God. Look at Acts just to again remind ourselves of that. Even in Isaiah, all these were spoken. In Psalm, all these were spoken. But let's just remind ourselves Acts chapter 7, verse 48. Acts 7, 48. It says, However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne. And earth is my foot too. What happened all these things? So God does not dwell in physical tabernacle. God dwells in this fleshly tabernacle of our heart. We are the tabernacle of God. We are the temple of God. That God has recreated through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Again. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3, and then I'll begin to make some how points. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. Let's just look at it quickly. It says, you are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the spirit of the living God not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the heart. We are recreated being of God. We are not just ordinary human beings. We are recreated by the Spirit of God. You are not ordinary. John chapter 1 starts by saying, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made by him. There is nothing that was made that was made without him. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehends it not. Then it goes further to say that the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us, amongst men, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And then he went further and said, he came into his own, he came to the world, and the world did not receive him, but as many as received him to them, he gave power to become the children of God, the sons and daughters of God. But also we're talking about the temple of God, because God has restored us, removed the Adamic nature through the blood of Jesus, and recreated us by his spirit, and has put his nature in us to walk in righteousness and manifest his power. That is the power of the new creation. This is the life that we have been given to live. Glory be to God. For you to appreciate what we're talking about, let's look at the example of the old temple. Because you are God's temple. You heard that clearly, isn't it? In uh, the uh, uh, first Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Let's just remind ourselves of the old temple temple. 
which God gave to Moses and said, this is the example of what is coming. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 9. Just It says, then indeed, even the first covenant had ordinances of divine service. I'm reading from the first one. And the earthly sanctuary for a tabernacle was prepared. The first part in which was the lampstand, the table, and the shoe bread, which is called the sanctuary. And behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid, or overlaid on all sides with gold, in which were the golden pot that had the manna, Aaron's rod that bordered, and the tablets of the covenant, five. And above it were the cherubim, the, the, the angels' representative, were the cherubim of glory, overshadowing the mercy seat. Of these things, we cannot now speak in detail. We cannot now speak in detail. You can go to Exodus chapter 25 and read all the way through 30. Verse 6. Now, when these things had been thus prepared, the priest always went into the first part of the tabernacle, performing the services. You know, that's where the priests offer the incense. Seven, but into the second part, the high priests, remember the priest goes into the first part, the sanctuary, and offer incense after the sacrifice has been made. Seven. But into the second part, the high priest went alone once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the people's sins committed in ignorance. Eight, the Holy Spirit indicating this, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. So God has always longed for this fellowship to be restored. But because there was nothing, no perfect blood to cleanse man, for the spirit of God to be restored, so God can continue to have that fellowship. God gave us an example through Moses. The tabernacle was made. And the presence of God continually abided in the Holy of Holies. Yet, only once in a year can the high priest enter. And even before that, the high priest will prepare himself, sanctify himself. In fact, you can read all the, the details. You would even have to tie something to the high priest. Because he could, he could die inside there. And if he dies, nobody else can go in. He will have to be drawn out. That's what we're talking about. The presence of God. Glorious presence, power of God. By the Spirit of God. So verse 9. It was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make him who performed the service perfect in regard to the conscience. See, verse 10, concerned only with foods and drinks, various washings and fleshly ordinances imposed until the time of reformation, until the time of reformation. Take note of that. The time, this is the time of reformation. After Jesus has come, his blood is now made available to wash us. And as we read, the temple was torn. That veil that covered the holy of holies, the presence of God that man cannot enter, was torn from top to bottom after Jesus was crucified by the crucifixion of Jesus Christ by his death. He offered, he gave the perfect gift, the blood for the atonement of man's sin, for the recreation of this temple of God was made so that God's spirit 
can come into man. I continue to read verse 11. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle. Can you see that? Not made with hands, that is not of this creation. Not with the blood of goats and cows, but with his own blood. He entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Glory be to God. 13. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Hello, brothers and sisters. Let me wrap it up. So it's been established. God dwell, dwelt or dwelt in that holy of holies. His presence, his power, his glory was there. But there was no man righteous enough to go in. The blood of bulls and goats, rituals will have to be prepared, done. And the high priest will go in once in a year. But through Jesus Christ, God has now prepared for himself a tabernacle, your body, my body, and that blood has cleansed us from sin. The nature of sin is removed. The Adamic nature is removed. The forgiveness has been obtained through the blood of Jesus Christ. And now God's spirit is restored to us. We are recreated by the spirit of God. Glory be to God. As Romans chapter 8, verse 11 says, it says, But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Look at 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. That if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. We are children of God. And if children then heads, heads of God and joint heads with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Hallelujah. We have been recreated. You are the temple of God. So the blood of Jesus washes this temple, no more the blood of bulls and goats, and makes this temple ready. God Almighty then said that he will put his word, his law in our hearts. And he will put his right spirit in us. So what is your responsibility, my brothers and sisters? Number one is to, again, as we said, be conscious of who you are, that you are a new creation. Number two. Cleanse yourself. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse you. Give your life to Jesus. Surrender to God through Jesus Christ and ask God to wash you with his blood. It is this cleansed body that becomes the dwelling place of God. And number three, yield yourself to God and ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit for it is the Spirit of God that renews us, that works the power of God in us. Number four, be filled with the word of God continually. 
the word of God is what the spirit of God uses to operate in us. Col Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Read it with me. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. This word, this Bible, the truth of God. It's not the arguments around rituals and dates and months. It is life, the life that is given to us through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, by the Spirit of God. So that's why you must take the Word of God very seriously. So are you still walking in sin? If you're walking in sin, beloved brothers and sisters, it's a very dangerous thing to do to yourself. The blood of Jesus is available to cleanse you right now, cleanse anybody. I just pause at this point uh, with this last scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Read it with me. But we have this treasure in heaven vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. So there is the treasure of the Spirit of God, of the new man in you, in me. We have been recreated. It is the flesh that is called this heaven vessel. So we are still this vessel, but there is a new man inside of us by the Spirit of God, having been washed and cleansed and purged by the blood of Jesus. So what are we? What is this new man for? It is to show for the glory of God. It is to manifest totally, completely as the Son of God. So when you think of all that Jesus Christ did while he was here on earth, in that he had that divine nature in him, he has made us to be like him. God now, by his spirit, fellowships, can fellowship. We can fellowship. We can relate with God. We have a relationship with God. We have been restored into that Full communion, full relationship with God. Let me pause here so we can pray. We have this treasure in heaven vessel. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. You have the treasure in heaven vessel. I'll just read from verse 6 and then 7. He said, for it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That's it. We are to manifest the full glory of God. So take time again, read the Synoptic Gospels and read the Acts and everything Jesus did as he promised us. He said, the works that I do, you shall do also. And in the apostles, these works were manifested. We have been recreated, cleansed by the blood of Jesus, built into the new temple of God, filled with the Holy Spirit and the word of God to manifest the fullness of God as the sons and daughters of God. So that the earth, the world, the people might be reconciled unto God. That's why the Bible says, Romans chapter 8, that the creation waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. We are new creation. We are the temple of God. The Almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters. Let us pray. So we are the temple of God. And the temple of God is holy cleansed by the blood of Jesus because it's only that cleansed temple that the blood of Jesus has prepared that the spirit of God can dwell in. And by the spirit of God that dwells in us, we are reconnected into that communion with God. And by the way, don't forget all these are in the book, Who is a Christian? Remember, we said that when we receive the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God helps us in four distinct ways. One of the ways is in communion, that is fellowship with God. We are restored to fellowship with God. 
Oh, we are the temple of God. Let us pray now. Look at your own life. If you are there and you have not been washed and cleansed by the blood of Jesus, or you are still one of those that is speaking in tongues around, and the next moment you're fornicating around, you have the nature of the devil. Don't deceive yourself. Yeah, you have the nature of the devil. The Adamic nature still operates in you. That's not how you are not yet the temple of God. This is not judging. I'm helping you to know because it is not by your effort. The temple of God is recreated through Jesus Christ. All you need to do is receive Jesus and he will recreate you into that temple of God. He will remove the nature of sin. He has destroyed sin, destroyed the devil. Destroy the power, the Adamic nature. And then he will put the spirit of God in you to manifest the power of God. But many of us don't want to give up our ways. We want to have our cake and eat it, as uh, the English adage says. Please go ahead and pray. Right now, look at your life. If you have not, if you're still in any way, allowing Adamic nature to overcome your spirit, you have to repent. That's the beauty about this. You can always ask God, forgive me as you learn. Submit to God. That is it. Receive Jesus. Receive the gift that God has given you. Don't hold back anything. Give all. When you give all, you will see the change. You will see the transformation. You are the temple of God. I am the temple of God. Once you have done that, then become conscious. So the temple of God cannot just do anything. Become conscious. Because we are going forward to then operate with this understanding that you now know that you are the temple of God. In that temple is the altar. Do you remember? We talk about altar. Go ahead and pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving me Jesus Christ, your son, your Beloved son, your only begotten son, thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for me, for recreating me into the temple of God. You have built me into the spiritual house, the house of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Even right now, I ask almighty God, let that blood of Jesus wash me, cleanse me, purge me. From every sin, every Adamic nature in me, let the blood purge me. Let the blood wash me. Lord Jesus, purge me by yourself and make my body the temple of God, the temple of the living God, the temple of the Holy Spirit. From now, right now, I hold back nothing. I keep nothing away from you, almighty God. I hand over my whole life to you. You have desired to dwell in me, in my body as your temple. And I offer it to you. I give it up to you. God Almighty, come and dwell in me now. Therefore, I ask for your spirit upon me afresh. Give me your Holy Spirit. Renew me. Change me. Transform me. And put your word in me. Let the word of God, the word of Christ, dwell in me, in my heart. Fully give me understanding, the understanding of the mystery of God and of his Christ. And help me, almighty God, by your spirit to live in this new life, to manifest as a son, as a daughter of God to fulfill all your will and your purpose for my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I just want to agree with you. By that power, by that the spirit of God be renewed, be transformed in the name of Jesus. And by the new creation, power of God that is in you, that is in me, all oh, the blessing of God, all oh, that Jesus has defeated and has taken away from that body will no longer afflict you. Sickness will not afflict you. Disease will not afflict you in the name of Jesus. Sin will not touch your life because you're a new creation and you will not touch sin. 
in the name of Jesus. And now may the Holy Spirit of God empower you and manifest the righteousness of God, the fruit of the Spirit in you, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the power of God in you, in your life. Whatever has been a hindrance to you manifesting as the temple of God, as the house of God, operating in the dimension of the Holy Spirit, let that hindrance be removed now, Right now, receive him, the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let us all go ahead and just ask him and say, Heavenly Father, fill me afresh. Fill me anew with your Holy Spirit. I am your temple. Go ahead and confess that I am your temple. I am the temple of God. I am your, the temple of God. I am the temple of God. I have been recreated by the blood of Jesus. I have been recreated and by the Spirit of God, I have been renewed. I have been renewed. I have been renewed. By the Spirit of God, I have been restored. I am a son. I am a daughter. Go ahead. I have been reconnected into fellowship with your Almighty God. From now on, Almighty God, speak to me by your Holy Spirit. Relate with me and help me. Let me relate with you. Holy Spirit of God, I surrender to you. Lead me continually. Lead my brothers and sisters. Lead every one of us here, Lord. Lead every one of us, Holy Spirit. Teach us, teach us, teach us, teach us. Open our eyes of understanding. Open our ears to hear you, our minds. To perceive, receive, discern, to understand the things of God, the things of the Spirit. And now, Holy Spirit, use us to make great impact, to do the work that Jesus Christ has chosen us, has called us to do. Through this, your children, Almighty God, heal the sick, raise the dead, let devils, demons be cast out, oppression of the devil be stopped in our lives, in our families, in our environment, anywhere we are. Let the light of God shine. Let the light of Jesus shine in us and shine through us. We surrender to you, o God Almighty. Let your power like never before manifest in us, manifest through us. And use us to bring many sons and daughters into the kingdom of God. And Lord, we pray, even by this teaching today, bring many sons and daughters into the kingdom and empower them by your spirit and fill them with your truth, your word of truth. Sanctify them by your truth. Thank you, our Lord and our God. Lord, we pray that as long as Jesus tarries, you will keep us in this new creation, new life to your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters, and we return all glory to our Father in heaven and to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is where we will end. Bye-bye.